There's a debt ceiling standoff in Congress and everything's on the table. So this means a lot of government employees are wondering, what does this mean for me? Is my pay gonna be cut? Are benefits gonna be cut? So because we passed the borrowing limit, extraordinary measures can now be used. So what does that mean? This includes reducing cost of living adjustments or just flat out getting rid of them. Now, the average cost of living increase we've been seeing in the government is between one and 3%. But there were some years where we received 0%. The years are 2011 to 2013. There was absolutely no cost of living adjustment when it comes to pay raises for the government. Also, they can freeze the rate of return through the TSPG fund and reducing government share of retirement contributions. The government contributes to FERS, which is the retirement, the pension plan. So based on when you actually enter the government, they will contribute around a half a percent all the way up to four and a half percent every time that you're paid. So that would be either halted or it would just go away completely. And they can limit the government contributions to the health benefits program. So all of those are in play. But what's most likely to be cut or trimmed? We don't know yet. We're going to have to wait to find out. I think the, the deadline is something like June. So we're going to have to wait and see how the negotiations go and what actually ends up happening. But there's a huge risk when it comes to government employees receiving their paychecks. If it gets to around June and they haven't figured it out, we could see delays in paychecks. And people that are retired, they can see delays in annuity payments. So in the past, these debt issues have always worked themselves out sooner or later. But what happens if the United States defaults on their debt completely? Well, that would have a huge impact in the economy. It would impact everybody, not just government workers, also veterans that are receiving VA payments for disability, that would affect them too. Every single US household in this country would be impacted in one way or another. And this could trigger a recession. Many experts believe we are already in a recession or that a recession is inevitable. It's gonna get here no matter what happens, but a surefire way to have a recession is by defaulting on our debt. We would see higher unemployment. So you've heard about 100,000, 200,000 tech workers getting laid off recently, but that would be nothing compared to if the layoffs hit the broader market. So retail, hospitality, construction, all of it. If layoffs hit the whole market, we could see unemployment six, seven, eight percent. Stocks and bonds would plunge. Social security checks would be delayed. Now, many people on social security, they are relying on that money coming in every month. If the money doesn't come in, they're not able to make it. And when you start messing with people's livelihood, especially when we're talking about our elder workers that have already put in 20, 30, 40 years, and now they're making an attempt at enjoying their golden years, and then all of a sudden something like this comes around and you don't see a social security check for a month or two or even longer, imagine the impact that has in the country. So why is all of this going on? Why don't we just approve something? One word, politics. Politics is the reason why. Posturing and politics. The individuals in the, in the Senate, the individuals in the House of Representatives, the congressmen, these people, their number one priority, in my opinion, is to keep their power, to keep their position. And how do they do that? They have to please their constituents, the people that sent them to Washington, D.C., the voters that got them into power, they have to please them. So let's say there's a conservative congressman their constituents, they do not want to continually raise the debt and fund new government spending programs. So in order to appease them, in order to get reelected, they will be an obstructionist. They will say, you know what? I'm not voting on anything until you make cuts. So you have both sides at a standstill and there's no progress being made. Now, certain members of Congress are willing to sign off to lift the debt ceiling but they want government spending cuts or they want certain agreements. And that's just how it works. It's, it's quit pro quo over there. So this could be discouraging, especially if you're looking for a federal government job. And if you are looking for a government job, you know that the number one thing that you have to focus on is having a strong federal resume. And if you want help strengthening your federal resume, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.